Good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to present the scenario for sudden shift in the parent genes. And I'd like to go through uh, some of the basics of our assumption and uh, review the results of the uh, Oxford Economics model uh, outcomes. So, reserve currencies come and go. So, the reserve currencies are belong to those economies with the dominance in the trade, international trade, and the military supremacy of the time. <coughs> so, and they serve not only as a means of exchange for international transactions, as well as the, the state haven currency that uh, whenever there's a crisis happen, and as Andrew put out, uh, put it, uh, the flight, for flight to quality currency would be the case. In the 1960s, the US, US dollar became a dominant currency of the, uh, of the world, replacing the British pound. And we question the sustainability of US dollar as a reserve currency of the world because the fundamentals of U US economy is actually being challenged by China. In November uh, this year, IMF announced that uh, they will include renminbi to its SDR reserve, the special drawing rights that the reserved, uh, reserve currency for IMF member states. It is a significant event because this is the first emerging market currency to be included to the IMF uh, basket. And uh, this is a rather uh, uh, symbolic recognition of China's importance to the whole uh, world economy. And some of you say it's a pat on the back to uh, keep on doing the good work. And judging from the senior officials from China's uh, central bank, they are well under uh, they understand the challenges ahead. So China's contribution to the world has actually been very important for some time. As you can see from the, uh, the, the graph, the, the percentage share of the world economy, uh, world export, is has been growing and then even larger than US, that of US. And uh, during the same period, period of time, China's percentage of GDP has more than doubled from 2010 to 2014. And its currency, renminbi, was uh, getting more popular in terms of international payment uh, statistics by uh, SWIFT. So from the 20th place in January 2012, it's as of October 2015, it's become the fourth largest currency traded internationally. So therefore, the project, uh, the announced official uh, weighting of the, the, the renminbi is 10.9%, which is uh, a <coughs> little bit lower than initially suspected by uh, many, many, many analysts because, you know, because of their share of the GDP and because of the share their share of the world export. This is uh, China's strategy roadmap for their currency internationalization. So they want to make their currency firstly as a, as a means of trade and then make, make, make more valuable along the line to investment currency and ultimately reserve currency. They want to do it because it's all a part of their plan to become a service-oriented company, a uh, country driven by domestic consumption. In, in order to do that, they have uh, China have implemented a series of measures to uh, get this plan forward. <coughs> so, in terms of the trade, they want to uh, promote trade settlement in RMB. So. Now, uh, multinational corporations can make transactions in RMB using their own credit account. And they also try to uh, make their currency more floating, um, freely floating uh, against other currencies. So from 0.3% trading band for the daily trading band uh, since 1994, now they are planning to do a wider trading band, up to 5%. They also make their currency 
more in, uh, invest, uh, attractive for investment and finance. So they allow uh, direct investment in R&B, so corporations domestically and internationally are freely to, to trade in uh, invest, making an investment overseas in R&B currencies. They also increase the access to the market by allowing more companies to, to participate in interbank markets and bond markets. Now, China has established a global network for RMB clearing and transactions. So countries like uh, South Korea, Japan, New Australia, and New Zealand have direct RMB quotations of their own currency against renminbi. They, do have, they also have 28 countries with bilateral currency swap agreement, and uh, they have uh, nearly 20 RMB clearing centers around the world, and the number is growing. These are all part of their plan, and their plan is renewed every five years. The 12th plan was covering the year 2011 to 2015. And as you can see, they have achieved most of the targets. The, third, the 13th uh, five-year plan will have much more modest GDP growth targets, but they will remain in course for market reforms and liberalization processes. Three things uh, we can project out of this whole movement. Firstly, we can see that uh, the volume of international transactions and trade will grow further. So if you think about a pipe, it would be larger in diameter, and the volume of flow will be larger as well. So especially the, the recent, the latest plan announced by China is actually allowing the domestic individual investors to directly access the foreign securities market. And secondly, commodities trade. So most of it, China is the largest commodities importer. So it, is, it, is, it will save a lot of money for them if they have a partial, at least a partial trade, commodity trade in R&B. And then lastly, central banks and multinational corporations will increasingly consider rebalancing their, their capital accounts with R&B. Although it, the process will slow, will be slow, but they seriously need to consider once we, once, once they hear the result of our scenario test. <laughs> so, so building on uh, Andrew's and, and Scott's uh, remark on the sort of interconnectedness of the world's uh, securities market, China, so events in China has already been sort of a, a price with the uh, other global financial markets. So this is August 2015, so early August this year. So Shanghai com uh, Composite Index actually uh, dropped 27%, and then at the same period, S&P 500 and FTSE 100 dro uh, dropped 10%, around 10%. So here is the, uh, based on the assumptions, here is the scenario. So first, China's economy continues to grow fast, and then China's currency becomes more popular. And the demand pushes up. In the meantime, credit rating agencies rumbling about uh, US's economic fundamentals. And finally, some major credit rating agency downgraded the US sovereign, sovereign bond and the pen ensued. So China forced to sell off an, an unprecedented amount of uh, the treasury bills to the market and the panic is actually expanded. So that, despite, despite the U.S.'s effort to uh, stabilize the currency, the it, global investors move their, uh, their capital from U.S. to China. Using economics, uh, Oxford economics model, these are the variables we, we use to shock. So the 
the S1 uh, variable variant, we use 10% uh, appreciation of uh, Chinese revenue B against dollar, and the S2, 25%, and the extreme version, 50%. And this is the result for macroeconomic uh, impact. So inflation rate will go up in most of the other countries. So China is actually facing a deflation because of the rapid appreciation of their currency. The short-term and long-term interest rate will affect as well. So you can see on the right-hand corner, US trying to uh, raise the interest rate to stabilize the currency, the value, whereas in China trying to lower their currency to be competitive in the international trade. The government, uh, government debt, the most, again, most uh, affected, affected is the US. And seemingly China is actually affected more, but uh, it is uh, largely due to the, uh, the underlying uh, debt. It, it's around uh, two and a half times of their, their GDP. And this is uh, changes in credit ratings. So what you can see from here is uh, not only uh, US uh, itself, the countries like Japan and China can be also uh, negatively affected by the sudden changes in credit uh, currency appreciation because they already have a large proportion of treasury bills on their, on their, on their balance sheet. And this is the uh, macroeconomic uh, GDP growth rate. So again, US will be the highly affected ones. Japan is already in the, in the recession. And the China also experienced uh, short period of recession on a very, very extreme scenario. And this is the uh, projected uh, global GDP. And as you can see, unlike the all-up scenario, this one is a rather short, and the, the, econ the global economy will bounce back strongly after the uh, current currency shift. And finally, this is the uh, portfolio uh, performance on the different scenarios. As you can see, compared to other scenarios, uh, the different risk profile doesn't really sort of bring difference in, t in terms of uh, portfolio uh, management. This indicates that uh, the e extent which to which these uh, portfolios rely on uh, USD. So the takeaway here is, I think, uh, we consider too much, we consider sort of a, uh, too much exposure on USD. Thank you.